Welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays with Lori and Charles Calloway here. Today, everyone, great show for you. We're going to be talking to Charles Calloway, financial advisor extraordinaire, about the Rule of 72. What is it? What does it mean to us? Charles, we know we reviewed Rule of 72 with you last week. However, I know there are some ways that we can take this simple rule and make some tweaks, and it can really, really improve our financial picture. Absolutely, Lori. I, I think the Rule of 72 is, is foundational, is fundamental. It, it not only is a great way to put your mind around how money grows or how we're affected by the things like inflation and things like that, but it just helps us um, think the way we should think as a relation to money, okay? I, I think it's good. But let me ask you, Lori, what, do you recall when in school – you learned the rule of 72. You know, I didn't learn the rule of 72 in school. I didn't learn it until, you know, in my, actually my mid twenties. Your mid twenties. Well, that was just a couple, couple years ago, right? Yes. <laughs> a couple times. <laughs> a couple. <laughs> All right. So let, let me re, let's review the rule of seventy two in greater detail. Last last week we did something really cool. We we uh, did the refrigerator analogy and everything. But let's back out and look at it a little bit closer here. Uh, if, if if when it comes to the rule of seventy two, what it does is it answers a basic question: How long does it take my money to double if I get a certain rate of return on that money? Okay. It gives us gives us an appreciation for the compounding effect that comes with investing with saving money over the long term. Lori, you understand that when you put your money on deposit somewhere and they say they're going to pay you a certain amount of interest and it's going to be compounded, what they're basically saying is after year one, you're getting interest on top of your interest and all of that without having to go to work to do it. So just by virtue of leaving your money on deposit somewhere or leaving it invested somewhere, you're not only getting rewarded for the money being there, but then you're getting rewards on top of rewards. And that's why they call it compound interest. The question is, how do we get our mind around how fast it's going to grow, how fast it's going to double uh, over time? And the rule of 72 answers that question. So play along with me, Lori. I know you've seen this a lot of different times. You know what? I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to move us over to the side so we can see the screen better. So, so I want you to imagine you get a two percent rate of return, Laura, and you had, let's say, twenty thousand dollars. How do you feel? You like twenty thousand? You want? I'll give you twenty thousand dollars. Thank you. There you go. But, but Laura, you can't spend it right now, okay? Unless you're going to spend it on me. <laughs> okay. But let's say you take that $20,000 and you get a 2% rate of return on that money. The question is, how long would it take that 20000 to turn to 40000 or two times as much? Well, the answer is found by taking the number two, divided into 72. The answer is 36. So that means it's going to take you 36 years for the money to double. 36 years. Okay. Now, that's, that's very slow. Would you agree? Yes. All right. Now let's take it. One, let's 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 look at it a different way. Let's say inflation over the next 36 years averages two percent. Now inflation has been greater than that. We know that. Right. That means that in 36 years, over the course of maybe a person's working lifetime, they need to make double the income to purchase the same amount of goods. So if the car, for example, costs twenty thousand, it's going to cost forty thousand thirty-six years from now. If your groceries and electric cost twenty thousand dollars over the course of a year, you're going to need forty thousand to do the same thing. So you see how nice and neat, how how cool, how useful the rule of seventy-two is to try to understand the impact of things. It really is. So you're saying I can apply the rule of seventy-two to things, goals that I have, or things that are on my bucket list in my financial future as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so if someone says something is growing at a certain rate of return on average, apply the rule 72, and I'll show you how long it will take the money to double, okay? Now, here comes the first test question, Lori. Let's say you go from 2%, so now you're able to get a 6% return. Or another way of looking at it, 
would be three times the rate of return. So instead of 2%, you get 6%, and you still start out with $20,000. My question to you is what would you have in the same 36 year period of time? Would you? So if I divide 72 by 6%, uh -huh. with 12. Yeah, so are 12. you telling me that every 12 years it's going to double? So exactly. not, yes. You got it. You know, in my mind, without doing the math, I probably would have said 80,000. Mm -hmm. But sitting and taking the time to do the math, it's actually doubled in that. So let's say my car now cost me 20,000. Mm -hmm. If my money got 2% in 36 years, I could buy a new car with the 40,000, but I wouldn't be getting ahead at all. I wouldn't have anything extra. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not sure about following you. You said if I buy a car that costs 20,000 today, are you saying that 36 years from now that same car will cost 40,000? Okay. But mm -hmm. if inflation is 6% on average for cars, or it's moving, is, is the inflation on it is like education. Let's use education as an example. Mm -hmm. If the education today costs $20,000 a year to go to, to NC State, it would cost 160,000 if the inflation for education is increasing on average 6%. It would cost you 160000 That's scary stuff, right? It is. So look at it the other way, though. If we put money, if we, if we get a 6% return on our money, if we're saving it, as opposed to 2%, we would go from our 20000 growing to forty to it growing to 160000 Okay? Big, big mistake if you settled for 2% when you could have gotten 6%, right? Right. right. Now... You, you want to, every time I look at the next one I'm about to show you, it always blows my mind. I never get over it. If you get a 12% rate of return, or look at it this way, in relation to the 6%, that's two times the return, right? Mm -hmm. You start out with the 20. I, I'll never forget Bill Thomas back in 1986 telling me this. I remember because this is the first time I saw the rule of 72. Bill said, Charles, he says, if you had the same amount of money, he used 10000 not 20000 And you double the rate of return from 6 to 12. What do you think you would have in that same period of time? And you know what I answered, Lori? I said $320,000, two times as much from the 6%. Right. And then he did this. He showed me this. Wow. Amazing. So 12 into 72 equals 6. That means it's doubling every six years. And look at that. That's a huge difference, right? Now, let's apply this to something, okay? When we go to the bank these days and we put our money on deposit, our deposit is basically marked as a liability with that bank. And the bank has certain rules where they're able to take that money that we put on deposit to, with them, and they can go and, and, and loan it to other people in the form of credit cards, car loans, even mortgages, things like that. So they can loan the money out and, and not at the risk of sounding cynical, they charge a higher rate to loan the money out than they pay for us putting our money on deposit. But whose money are they using, essentially? They're using our money, right? So put your mind around this. If the bank pays you 2% over the course of your lifetime that you leave your money there for whatever reason, and they charge 12%, and I don't think that's hard to imagine when you think about credit cards and things like that. The difference between column 2% and column 12%, that's profit to these banking institutions. Would you agree? Yes. And, you know, I read an article recently that said that the average American's credit score is either 740 or under. And the interest rates for credit cards for people who have a 740 or under are anywhere between 21.99% and 29.99%. Wow. Who is making all of that extra money? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So there's no, there's no 
there's no, uh, we're not surprised. We shouldn't be surprised by the fact that the, the banking institutions have the big buildings and we have the little houses. They have marble and we have linoleum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Because we're trained to think, put our put our money on deposit somewhere because it's safe and secure, secured by the FDIC. And then we never get around to learning how to invest and, and put our money somewhere where we have the opportunity to get a better rate of return. And then that institute, they also train us to, to think in terms of payments, our car payment, our credit card payment, our house payment, not thinking about how much it's costing us overall in terms of the interest that we're paying and that sort of thing. And so the they make the profit on our money. So that's why the wealth is controlled uh, by these institutions. So understanding the rule of 72 has a lot of different applications. And you know, one last thought here on this, how do you go from two to 12% to 6% the higher rate of return? You know, the yeah. bottom line is it, it, it boils down to where you have the money, okay? It, 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 it basically, if the money is on the if the money is invested, you have an opportunity to get a greater rate, rate of return. If the money is on deposit in the bank, you you really don't have the opportunity for the greater rate of return. But at the same time, we need to keep in mind this, Lori, that um, rate of returns. You know, when you invest money, though, if you're going to go for the opportunity, you're also going to have to understand and appreciate and be able to accept a certain amount of volatility. Or risk. We won't talk about that today, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. We've all heard that. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm going to take, if I'm going to, if I'm going to try to get a 9% return or a 10% return or something even astronomical, you know, something incredible like a 12% return, I have to expose myself to a certain amount of bounciness, if you will. The, the chance of, of my money being at certain days be worth less than what it was when I put there. So that's a whole different thing. So then we then that brings the question how do i manage that risk so anyway so that's the rule of 72 guys i hope that helps Lori, you, you have any other points you want to bring up or questions you want to ask you know that just goes to show the difference between two percent and let's say a nine percent or a twelve percent depending on um, how averse i am to risk and market fluctuation I don't have the knowledge to do this on my own. And I also need someone to encourage me. I really do need advice. I need a financial advisor to do this. If I'm not one myself, if I am not, um, you know, part of a bank or an institution where I'm actually learning these things mm -hmm. um, for myself, anyone out there, this has been great general advice today from Charles. However, individual advice, there's a lot of different factors that can come into play message us we're more than happy to sit down with you on an individual basis and customize this to whatever your financial plan is if you're like us if you have possibly some friends or family members out there who could use some financial advice however it's such a painful thing and it's it's sometimes hopeless for people and they really need some good advice send them hashtag get better with your money for our private facebook group to join that they have access to that advice and they can keep it confidential as well. Also, we have a YouTube channel, hashtag 16 on the scene, interviews with Charles and Lori Calloway. If you're a business owner and want some tips as far as business finances or how to get your business off the ground as well. Otherwise, we're going to join you next week for another fantastic show with great advice from Charles. See you then. Thanks for